What do you get when you combine an oversized cargo plane and an aircraft carrier? A seemingly impossible feat that the US military attempted to conquer for decades. But have you ever wondered why the US military kept attempting to land massive cargo planes on aircraft carriers? At first glance, this may seem like an illogical and dangerous endeavor, but the potential benefits were significant. From transporting troops and equipment quickly and efficiently during times of conflict to providing aid and relief during humanitarian crises, the possibilities were endless. Join us as we delve into the history of this revolutionary concept, the challenges faced along the way, and the eventual success that changed the course of military logistics forever. So sit tight, buckle up, and let's take off. The Need for Large Cargo Planes To understand why the US military kept trying to land oversized cargo planes on aircraft carriers, we must first delve into the history of this concept. The US military's fascination with the idea of landing large planes on carriers began in the 1950. During this period, the US military was experimenting with different ways of projecting power across the globe. And the aircraft carrier was a crucial part of this strategy. Later, the development of large cargo planes, such as the C-130 Hercules and the C-5 Galaxy, meant that the military could transport troops and equipment over long distances quickly. While these planes were incredibly useful, they still had a major limitation. They required long runways to take off and land. This made it difficult to use them in certain areas where there simply wasn't enough space for a traditional runway. Additionally, in a combat situation, runways could be destroyed, rendering these planes useless. The idea of using aircraft carriers. Given these limitations, the US military began to explore the idea of using aircraft carriers to transport large cargo planes to remote locations. The idea was that the cargo planes could land on the carrier and then be transported to their final destination by smaller aircraft. This would allow the military to transport large amounts of equipment and supplies to virtually any location in the world, regardless of whether there was a traditional runway. It would also solve the military's need for a quick and effective way of transporting troops and equipment over long distances. In many cases, an aircraft carrier was the most viable option, as it could be deployed quickly and had the necessary resources to support large-scale military operations. However, the problem was getting troops and equipment onto the carrier without an intermediate landing on an airstrip. Landing an oversized cargo plane on an aircraft carrier was seen as a potential solution to this problem. It would allow the military to transport troops and equipment directly to the carrier, thereby saving time and reducing the risk of interception by enemy forces. Furthermore, using a large cargo plane would mean that the military could transport larger amounts of equipment, such as tanks and artillery, directly to the carrier. The Challenges of Landing Cargo Planes on Aircraft Carriers Despite the potential benefits of landing oversized cargo planes on aircraft carriers, there were numerous challenges that had to be overcome. One of the most significant challenges was the sheer size of the planes. Landing a C-130 or a C-5 on an aircraft carrier required a significant amount of skill and precision, and there was a risk of the plane falling off the edge of the carrier if the landing was not executed correctly. Furthermore, the carrier itself was not designed to accommodate large cargo planes. The runway was too short, and the deck was not strong enough to support the weight of the plane. To overcome these challenges, the military had to modify the carrier and the plane to make them compatible. This included reinforcing the deck, extending the runway, and installing additional equipment to aid the pilot during the landing. Different Trials Despite these challenges, the US military continued to explore the idea of using aircraft carriers to transport cargo planes. In the 1960, they began the C-130 Carrier Onboard Delivery COD program, which was designed to modify C-130 planes so they could land on carriers. In 1963, the US Navy attempted the first ever landing of a C-130 Hercules on an aircraft carrier. The planes were outfitted with tail hooks similar to those used on fighter jets, and modified landing gear to allow for shorter takeoff and landing distances. The program was successful, 
and the C-130 Cody planes were used extensively during the Vietnam War to transport supplies and equipment to remote locations. While the C-130 COD program was successful, there was still a need for even larger cargo planes. Enter the C-5 Galaxy. This massive plane was designed to transport tanks, helicopters, and other large equipment to remote locations. However, it was too big to land on traditional runways, which led the military to explore once again the idea of using aircraft carriers. In the 1980, the US military conducted a series of tests to see if the C-5 Galaxy could land on an aircraft carrier. The tests were conducted using a specially modified carrier, the USS Kitty Hawk, and a C-5 Galaxy that had been outfitted with tail hooks and modified landing gear. While the tests were successful, the military ultimately decided that the risks of landing such a large plane on a carrier were too much, and the idea was abandoned. The Benefits the potential benefits of this concept were significant. It would allow the military to transport troops and equipment quickly and efficiently, which was crucial during times of conflict. It would also reduce the risk of interception by enemy forces, as the planes would be landing directly on the carrier. Furthermore, landing oversized cargo planes on aircraft carriers could be a game changer during humanitarian crises. The ability to transport large amounts of aid directly to the affected area could significantly reduce the time it takes to provide relief and support to those in need. So if you have any stories or thoughts on this, then leave them in the comments section below. Now, this could have been revolutionary for naval warfare and have solved many of the logistics problems around the globe. Unfortunately, the technology is not advanced enough, but things might change soon. With U.S. carriers moving into the South Sea and threatening China, we might see another wave of technological warfare between the most powerful countries in the world. But this also means that things are getting heated and war might break out. Well, to know more about that, you need to click on this video right here. That would be all for this video. Click this to learn more about what's happening between the U.S. and China in the South Sea. So what are you doing? Click it now.